Hello there, I'm Nate, and welcome back to another video for Vintage Rails here. So, I'm going to do something a little bit different. In fact, a friend of mine is going to do something different. So, this isn't really train related, but it is live Steam, which I'm sure would qualify somewhat. So, and this is the man of the video, the star here. Yes, hello. I'm Richard, and one of Nate's good friends. So today, right here in front of us, as he said, we have something live steam. Except this is come from a cross country. Um, this is a Willis Coast steamroller. More this like across the pond. Yeah, more or less. But this is from the 1960s. This particular model um, was shipped over to me from Georgia from a nice man. He has a nice uh, vertical boiler steam collection and along with steam tractors. Um, Willis Co. was founded in 1912, very old company. And due to the fact that they actually only started making steam toys, quote, quote, in 1950s, this model is probably one of the for earlier batches. Only, only 10 years old at that time. So right now what we're checking is the safety valve to make sure this is on correctly. So I'm gonna unscrew this all the way. Check to see if there's water in the boiler, which there is. Unfortunately, the lighting won't let you see it. And we're gonna screw that back on carefully. Another thing we have to check for is that all of our points are oiled correctly. I oiled this, um, I oiled the steam roller earlier, so it should be fine. But here we have our cylinder, automatic lubricator, and we also have our flywheel, making sure that is moving without any obstruction. Valve gearing seems to be going fine as well. The whistle valve, although a bit tricky to handle on this model part in particular, as it's always in a weird position, is um, close, so we have to make sure that is in the closed position, it is. We also have to check if there's water in the boiler. So here in the back we have a nice big round gauge glass, or water glass, and it's around two quarters, maybe no, halfway full, that is perfect. We don't want to fill it up all the way as we need room for steam. So now that we're almost ready to steam up, let's slap our funnel back on. Exhaust steam goes through the funnel after it's used. So, how are we going to fire up this steam roller, you think? Well, we have a nice big old tray down here. Our fuel of choice today is cotton balls soaked in isopropyl alcohol. But typically, when running um, some of these Willis Co. Um, steam tractors or steam engines in general, you would use solid fuel tablets provided by the manufacturer themselves. But typically, if you want to do a quick firing, isopropyl and cotton balls so works a trick you just need a stuff one in the tray like that and let's grab another one I'd say typically do two to three do not do over that or else you will end up with a big fireball I guess we learned that huh we did learn that the hard way the fireball effect is basically when you have way too much fuel inside the tray and you have too good of a fire, it burns a little too well, and it engulfs the engine in a big flame. Not something that we want, really. There's an airport nearby, so I guess you'll have to deal with the planes overhead. Well, now that we're ready to actually light this on fire, just remember you always use caution. And we have a light. So now we slap this inside the firebox and now we wait steam time is usually about five minutes to uh, five minutes to seven minutes at most but um typically if you have a bigger flame then it would go a lot quicker so we're just gonna wait for this to heat up and we cut to when it's all steamed up and actually running so see you in a second now after a few minutes we got some steam coming out of the safety valve or more like water right now that is correct so to do a little test we'll just open the whistle valve just a little bit and see if it makes a little sound all right so we do got pressure let me just make sure that's closed properly now we got a nice boil if you want to go show that gauge in the back nice boil going so once we turn this knob right here. Typically there would be a red one like this one, but after, over time they've, they've just disappeared. Let's open up this valve and spin the flywheel and it should start growing. 
You get a lot of planes around here, don't you? Oh yes, all the time. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna cut the camera. I think we actually lost our plane. That's why it wasn't moving. Fire again. Okay. Yeah, the fire went out and had to relight some more cotton balls. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a very short-term fuel source, but with proper placement and enough of it, it should last us another couple minutes, at least five, I'm hoping. That's what I'm aiming for. I hear it boiling a little. Fuel... I hear it boiling a little. Oh uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, now that it was already heated up, it shouldn't take too long, at least a minute. Let's hope. Yes. Well, the solid fuel tablets last a lot, last a lot longer. I'm not too sure what exactly is in the solid fuel, but there's these little white tablets that perfectly fit in the tray, and once they're inside, they will last you a good amount of time. I'd say 10 to 15 minutes. Unfortunately, they do leave a bit of a mess. It's like um, burning a candle and the wax gets everywhere. Ugh. There you go. Now we got a rolling boil. Very nice. Uh, That's what we like to see. My advice is when storing these locomotives, when they're out of action, try and store them dry. I made sure to test this locomotive earlier. That's why there was already some nice distilled water within the boiler. Not tap water, right? <laughs> of course, you do not want tap water because that will cause scale and we do not like scale because that is a pain to fix. But I think she wants to roll. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm going to take there her out go. of gear. Let's take her out of gear. And there we go. She is alive and well. So if you want to control the speed, you can slowly close this valve. Okay, we're going to close it slightly. She'll start to slow down. There you go. And if you want to, looks like you can attach accessories to this little thing here and have it operate as a stationary engine. Yep, so Willis Co. does offer, oh, there's the fireball. Um, it does offer lots of attachments, such as a sawmill. Also, many attachments that you'd see um, when it comes to just general things. You can attach it to a generator and you can have it power things, such as a model railway. I have done that before. And if you see fire coming up the sides, it's all right. It will, it will subside once the alcohol starts burning off a little bit. Here we have our steering wheel, of course, if you want to show, it actually does steer using a chain system. And, and a could... little gear. Yes. Anyhow. So I think we'll find a nice location to actually run her, and we'll see you guys all there in a second. So now we found a nice little spot here on the sidewalk, so let's get her rolling, shall we? Let's open up the valve. Ooh. Stop it. Go forward. And engage. Almost. Almost. There you go. Scooty little fella, isn't it? And obviously on the move we can control where she's going using the steering wheel. Turn around here. Oh, there you go. We're gonna try and do a three point turn just so we can. Can you reverse it? Yeah. Oh, just the other direction on the valve. Yep. Or the cylinder. Oh, 
in all, absolutely very controllable, fantastic steam engine. That is why Willis Co is the number one in the world at the moment for small steam engines. Top quality, very affordable prices, all manufactured in the lovely country of Germany. Obviously, once you start to lose a bit of pressure, once you start to burn off a lot of that steam and the fuel starts to wear off, she will slowly just go to a stop on her own. The one thing you want to make sure is that your fire goes out before you run out of water. Exactly. Mm. We do not want a boiler explosion now, do we? Alright. I think we can really shut that valve closed. But that is it. That is essentially how you steam up, prepare, and run a live steam engine by this. Obviously, um, when storing the locomotive, like I said, please empty out the boiler. You can do that by opening up the safety valve cap and flipping it upside down. Make sure your tray is always empty and you remove all the material from the inside. So when done with running, you remove your tray and all of the leftover, whether it be solid fuel or whatever fuel medium you prefer, you empty it out in a safe place where it won't catch fire. And then you can safely put the tray back inside. Always make sure to oil your points, such as make sure to refuel the lubricator and all other everything that moves. Put a little dab of oil in it in between runs. But other than that, all in all, Nate, what do you think? Pretty interesting little engine you got here, I'll say. And it's a very good one, too. Especially Indeed. for its age and considering you've said it has a few problems. A few little issues. Let's just ignore the, the little toasted tomato of a whistle right there. But other than that, fantastic. Um, always remember to let the engine cool down as well once you're done running it like we're doing right now. Just let her sit, let her calm down. Other than that, I think... Thank you for joining me and Nate today, and also especially thank you to Nate for allowing me to show one of my many live steam engines here on his channel. I've already featured Alex, so thought I'd feature another friend here. And as one more plane goes somewhere in some direction from the Torrance Airport, thanks for watching, and please subscribe, consider subscribing for another video, to see another video. Ugh can't talk right now <laughs> anyhow so thanks for watching this video and until next time god bless